from New Hanover County Schools Television, powered by students. This is your school news. Welcome to your school news. I'm Mary Hall. And I'm Meg Pewitt. Topping our newscast, Street Safe Program shares important message with high school students. Fractured Fairy Tales brings laughs to Murrayville Elementary School, and Hogren Vikings teach visiting Danes about Southern living. Our top story this week, close to 150 people lost their life last year on North Carolina roads because someone was distracted, according to the North Carolina DOT. To help educate teens on the dangers, J.C. Good and her husband came to New Hanover County as a part of the District Street Safe Program. J.C.'s parents were killed and was, she was partially paralyzed in 2008 by a distracted driver. With this story is YSN reporter Vanessa Bergman. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Association, distraction is now believed to be responsible for more than 50% of serious teen crashes. J.C. Good is one of those statistics. In 2008, she lost both of her parents and almost her own life when a distracted teen driver ran a red light. She is just one of the estimated half a million injuries every year in this country caused by phone use behind the wheel, which is why Street Safe invited J.C. and her husband Steve to share their tragic story with the students of New Hanover County. District Attorney Ben David was also on hand with the Street Safe team to share local stories of the dangers of distracted driving. So here's what I need from the adults listening right now. Our kids are watching. They model our behavior. If you're wondering where it is that our young people are learning about distracted driving, look in the mirror. And so it's a real good reminder that even if you believe that you're stopped at a stoplight or at a stop sign, so you've got a couple of seconds to look down at your phone, those kids are looking from the back seat at you. And don't be surprised when they're texting and driving in the future. We have to be the ones to set the example. Students at all four of the traditional high schools got to hear JC's powerful message in presentations held this month. Good and her husband are determined to spread the message of the dangers of distracted driving and hope to prevent further tragedies by sharing their story. Students were encouraged to spread the word about the importance of safe driving behavior. The end result is that we stop killing each other on the road, that the roads, the cars are the most dangerous place we ever go, and 94% of car crashes are caused by human error. We can change that and we can make the world better. 71% of teens say they have sent a text while driving. The generally downward trend of crash fatalities since 2007 increased in 2015, and preliminary estimates for 2016 are even worse. The statistics also tell us that vehicle crashes kill more teens than the next four leading causes combined. When you combine those stats, it is a recipe for disaster, not only for young drivers, but for their passengers, as well as every other driver on the road. Um, I definitely think there'll be a group of people who take it to heart and will change after they had heard their story, but I also think there will be a handful that are just like, hmm, don't really want to be here and weren't really paying attention. I think persistence, just constantly keep spreading the movement, just spreading the movement and getting it out there and just over and over again, repetition, just telling people over and over again the harsh reality of how bad it really is. There are laws on the books in many states that make driving and talking or texting a crime. There's no prohibition on cell phone use while driving in North Carolina. However, all North Carolina drivers are prohibited from texting. It is hoped that the message shared by District Attorney David and by J.C. Good are ones that sink in and take hold with the students of New Hanover County to help curb this growing epidemic. Reporting for your school news, this is Vanessa Bergman. The students at Murrayvale Elementary School were treated to some funny fractured fairy tales presented by the theater students from Laney High School. The drama students tuned turned a number of familiar fairy tales upside down and inside out, generating lots of laughs, cheers, and even some boos for the villains. Ever wonder what would happen if Red Riding Hood weren't quite so dense, or the pigs got smarter, or Cinderella stood up to her evil stepmother? Timeless fairy tales are timeless for a reason, but every so often they need something different. That's where Lainey's fractured fairy tales filled in the blank. We got our scripts in about August and we've been working on this since then and we just kind of rehearsed and we practiced in front of kids to see what they liked. We just had a lot of rehearsals. In the 1960s, the popular show Rocky and Bullwinkle featured a range of fractured fairy tales. In fact, the title Fractured Fairy Tale is attributed to the show. Laney's theater students captured the true nature of the format by making sure the Murrayville Mariners connected the story's foundation with common stories. For example, some Laney's fractured fairy tales used the same title as the original tale, but added a twist to the story's title. It was a time for the Murrayville students to have fun and fairies and giant, a damsel in distress, knight, 
dastardly villains in the classic They Lived Happily Ever After. Hoggard IB students hosted a group of students from Denmark earlier this year. The Danish students stayed with host families from Hoggard's IB program. The Danish students enjoyed true Southern hospitality, spending several days at the high school shadowing students and discovering what life is like for an American high schooler. The Danes also got a chance to explore Cape Fear region. Classes took field trips downtown along the Riverwalk, explored the battleship, and the Hoggard students created interactive projects with the Danes, comparing life in the two countries. Some fun moments were also had as the Hoggard students took the Danes for shopping trips to Walmart, study time at Port City Java, and strolls along the beach. This is your school news on cable and online. Look for our blue logo for all the latest news online at www.nhcs.net. Welcome back to Your School News. I'm Meg Pewitt. David Long, local entrepreneur and founder of MyEmployees.com, came to C-Tech to talk with students about his rise from a retail salesman to owner slash operator of a national company assisting today's business leaders with employee training. Mr. Long talked about his first job at age 11, to learning a trade, to getting hired and fired, and even shared his experiences as an unemployed family man unable to pay his bills, and being forced to move back into his childhood home with his mother and father. Mr. Long also talked about having dreams, being dependable, and shared a few hard facts about the world. The CTEC students never lost focus as Mr. Long provides some unique insight that most students their age are never exposed to. As we talked about, I think that if they learn dependability being the greatest ability they could possibly have, if they just remember that one thing, it will impact everything they do the rest of their lives. That it's important to be dependable and late is, on time is late. Mr. Long also shared with the C-Tech students some of the wisdom from his book, Built to Lead. Such as out of every 100 employees hired, only six or seven will ever be promoted to a management position. He told the students that effective leadership requires going above and beyond being a boss. It takes skill and a positive mindset to reach the top. The C-Tech students had a lot of questions for Mr. Long, such as how to get venture capital, how he works to keep his employees happy, and how he balanced work and family time. It was an exciting opportunity for the students of C-Tech to talk and discuss their own entrepreneurial dreams with a local success story. Before the cold weather swept in, second graders in Garden Club at Freeman Elementary went to work. The club's goal was to help keep the school beautiful. The Freeman second graders weeded box gardens, planted some cool season flowers to bring a splash of color to the school's grounds. The Freeman second graders also planted a few winter crops. School planting beds are designed around a theme with cold, tolerant vegetables as the template. The students are excited to see their hard work come to life as we head into the cold winter months. Winter gardening has become, a popular, has become very popular for schools since there is no weeding November through February, provided that students have first weeded the beds. Students in the garden also learned that the winter gardens don't even need much watering. It was an exciting time for Freeman Garden Club and everyone is looking forward to harvesting time. For the second year, art students from our school district set up shop at the county fair and showcased their talents. Both middle and high schools participated by giving live demonstrations of painting, chalk drawing, pottery, and even how to create art from recycled goods. The demonstrations were free and gave the students a chance to shine. Live art is a budding trend in the event industry, as demonstrations provide event entertainment and many times lead to event decor once a particular installation is complete. Visitor, visitors to the art booth this year had a chance to experience art, making up close as they watched these students artists create in real time and were able to engage with them in an informal conversation about artistic processes. Wendy's High School Heisman recognized the following seniors representing New Hanover County Schools for their passion and leadership both on and off the field. McKenna Robertson from Hoggart High School, Gavin Jones and Sydney Simpson from Laney High School, and Sydney Evie and Francis Meehan from New Hanover High School. Since 1994, Wendy's and the Heisman Trophy Trust have been running the same play to perfection, honoring more than 600,000 students of the nation's most esteemed students. School winners will receive a certificate and a Wendy's High School Heisman patch. State finalists will receive a bronze medal, a Wendy High School Heisman State finalist patch, and a $25 gift card. 
Finally, we have an update on a story we reported on earlier this year. You may remember that Reagan Williams from Rolling Grace Middle School was selected as one of over 6,000 students from across the country in grades 6 through 8 to enter the Broadcom Masters National STEM competition. Back in September, she was selected as one of 30 finalists in the annual contest, and in October, she flew to Washington, D.C. for the competition. There, she competed a rigorous competition that fully tested her abilities in STEM, critical thinking, communication, creativity, and collaboration. We are now thrilled to announce that while Reagan didn't win the big money, she was vote one of Broadcom's rising stars. She will now go on to represent the U.S. at the Broadcom Masters International and act as official observers at the world's largest international high school science and engineering fair in 2018. Congratulations, Reagan. Check out these trending stories on the school system's website. Hoggard students selected for a 2018 National YMCA Youth Advocate Program. Teachers received the UNCW Promise of Leadership Award. Angela Hewitt named finalist for Southeast Regional Teacher of the Year. And always, trending is your school news on Facebook and Twitter.